This video is an affiliation with wiperblades.co.uk. And in this video, I'm gonna show you five different ways you can de-ice your car. And I'm also gonna show you how to make homemade de-icer. Any products I use in this video, I'll link to in the description. If your car is covered in snow, before you start de-icing it, you firstly need to remove the snow. Often underneath snow is just water, but I know that this is actually frozen underneath, so I will need to de-ice it as well. You can use either your hand and arm with good gloves and give it a good like that. Although start from the top and work your way down, not from the bottom and work your way up as I did there. You can use a squeegee, which is my preferred choice, and you can also get special brushes for brushing snow off. However, I wouldn't recommend using a broom that's been used on the floor because that's gonna get grit in it and that's gonna scratch your paintwork. So now I'm gonna to have to take some time removing all this snow. Be back with you in a minute. Once you have completed that arduous task, it's a good idea to turn your engine on because any heat your heater can provide will assist you in getting the ice off the windscreen. The first method I would like to mention is a pre-treatment. When I first saw this in the shops, I was quite excited because I'm very organized and I like to be prepared. And it's basically a spray bottle like this and you spray it over your car the night before you think it's gonna freeze and it stops your windscreen from freezing. The problem is that stuff was terrible. Yes, it may stop your windscreen from freezing in all your other windows, but it leaves this slimy gunk everywhere and you can't see out your windows anyway. So you end up cleaning your side windows instead of de-icing them. Actually cost me more time and it was very messy. So I don't recommend that method. The second method is to use de-icer. It comes in a trigger bottle such as this, or it comes in a can. I find the trigger bottle a lot better because it gives you a much wider mist. So it doesn't take so long to get good coverage. The cans give you this little pea shooter, little thing that takes forever well to get it all over your window i don't really like this stuff though because it's not very good on thick ice and i always end up getting it on my hands and it often takes a long time and it can be quite expensive as well but you can make it cheaper at home if you get two parts isopropyl alcohol with one part water mix it up put it in a trigger bottle there you go de-icer so on thick ice if i spray this on this thick ice here as you can see I can't see any different at all. Oh, and another thing, don't spray this on your car when the heater's on, the engine's running, because what I find is you get this mist in the air and the heater sucks up this stuff and puts it on your window. And I did that for years. And I was always wondering, why is the inside of my window getting so misted up every time my windscreen's frozen? And then I noticed it wasn't misted up before I started spraying this. And one day I noticed it was this that was causing it. I stopped doing that. I didn't have to wait five minutes every time for my demister to get rid of the steam on the inside of my window. Oh, and if you do decide to make your own de-icer, don't drink it. It is alcohol, but it's rubbing alcohol and even small amounts of that stuff can kill you. It may look like vodka, but it's definitely not vodka. Next method is an ice scraper. I've actually had this ice scraper since 2004 when I started driving and the rubber squeegee bit is well it's gone rock solid as rubber does sometimes this is very good not this rubber squeegee bit but the plastic scraper bit is very good at removing thick ice however it really struggles on super thin ice when the ice is super thin that's when the trigger bottle de-icer actually is really handy but as you can see if i use this on this thick ice now oh i make progress And you can see in no time, I'm gonna be able to clear this window of ice. However, you still end up with frozen windscreen wipers, which is not helpful. And now for my favorite, warm water. Now I bet many of you are diving into the comments right now and saying how warm water can break your windows. And I'm gonna to have to put a disclaimer there is a risk that that can happen. But in my experience, using warm water from the tap, 30 to 40 degrees has never broken any of my windows. And what's great about this is it works on thick ice, it works on thin ice, 
it sorts your wiper blades out and it's very quick. What I will say is make sure you do one window at a time or at least one side of the car at a time. I'll do the right side, the left side, the front and the back all separately because you will have to take your squeegee and wipe the water off quickly because if it's still freezing outside, it's going to refreeze. And I've never tried this below minus five. So I don't know what will happen below minus five because that's the coldest I've ever experienced. Once I've poured this stuff on the window, I'm gonna to have to turn the wipers on pretty damn sharpish, otherwise it could refreeze. However, the sun has just come out, which is typical when I'm making this video and it's starting to melt anyway. So I doubt that's gonna happen on this occasion. Let's give it a go. Watch the wiper blades. I'm very confident it's not going to um, break the window. I've done it so many times. And you see, if I get it on these wiper blades, it's really sorting them out. If you want to know where you get a big five litre bottle like this, well, it's just an old thing of screen wash. And I'm very confident now, if I pour the rest of this on here and turn those wiper blades on, that's going to do the trick just fine. And that is, there's quite a lot of snow that's melted there. It's not as cold as it was earlier, but it's an awful lot of snow. It's tackled quite thick. However, if you are afraid of cracking your windscreen or breaking one of your windows, don't use this method. Another problem with this method is that it puts water on the floor. And if it's still freezing outside, and it is today, it's still minus one, that water can freeze and probably will and cause a slippery patch on the floor. So think about who's going to be walking there before you use this method. I take no responsibility for anybody's broken windows except for my own, but I haven't broken a window yet and I'm fairly confident I'm not going to. Glass these days on cars is pretty damn good stuff. The reason why the glass can break is because of thermal shock. What happens is that you heat up very suddenly a very small part of the window that expands before the rest of the window can and causes a crack. It's much more likely to happen with a bigger temperature difference though, say minus five to 150, 200 degrees. But if it's minus five outside and you're putting 30, 40 degree water on it, although I'm not gonna take any responsibility for anybody's cracked windows, in my experience, it's been absolutely fine. I've come out in the morning on the next day because it was really cold last night. It's one of the coldest nights in 10 years in the UK and it's covered in a thin layer of snow, which I'll remove first, but quite a hard yet thin layer of ice. So let's see how my tools work. Firstly, let's try the scraper. See how that tackles this ice quite well, actually. Not too bad. Looks like it's very misty underneath. I can't actually see into the car because underneath there seems to be a thick film of mist on the inside of the windscreen. Let's try this de-icer, see how well that works. And that's also working quite well too because the ice is quite thin today. So it's quite easy to remove, except obviously on the blades, spraying it on the blades, there's still snow on there. It's gonna take ages to get rid of the ice on the blades using this stuff. Just trying to give you a closer look now at the windscreen. And can you see that you can't see into the car? There's a thick layer of mist on the inside of the window. In a moment, you'll see how quickly I can get rid of that. And now for my favorites, I'm gonna pour this water, this warm water all over the windscreen. Normally one of these big tubs that I fill up using the tap in the kitchen is enough to do the whole car. We have quite a bit left over when the ice is like this. Obviously it's fixed now, it might take some more, but here we go. Let's pull that over, try not to get it on myself. And then I must be quick now, get it on the wiper blades as well. I must be quick to get inside and wipe it with the wipers before it refreezes. And as you can see, using the wipers now, and I've completely cleared it of ice and the wipers are actually working really well. It has actually got rid of the mist on the inside as usual, but for some reason the mist was so thick today that, well, although the inside has melted, there's quite a lot of water on the windscreen. This isn't normal. The, water, the, there's, the inside of this windscreen is completely soaking wet. Um, so the warm water on the outside will get rid of the mist, but I would say on this occasion, the inside of the windscreen was actually frozen 
with a, a layer of ice, which can happen sometimes if there's been moisture in the car. And I recently cleaned the interior of this car to prep it for sale. So there must have been water drying out inside of the car. That's condensed on the windows. There's been thick ice on the inside of the window. So now obviously there's a nice thick layer of water on the inside of the window that I need to dry off, but it's not frozen and it's not misty. So I've just checked on my lay on. There's no ice on the inside of this window. So when I've used this water, you'll see that there will be no steam on the inside of the window and no ice. You can actually see the steam vanishing as I pour it on. Then I'll turn the wipers on and voila, as if by magic. See, quick and easy. Still a tiny bit of ice up there that I've missed, that the edge of the wiper blade's getting. I can hear it make a sound on there. So I should have done a better job pouring it over the window. And to do the side windows, have a squeegee ready, as I have done when well, I've put it on the roof ready. And I just literally pour from one side, or from the front to the back, or whichever way you want to. Try not to get it on your feet. And it will refreeze within about I don't know, 30 seconds, depends how cold it is. So then I just uh, wipe the water off. And job done. Again, no mist on the inside of the window. You can if you want to. What I do sometimes is splash the wing mirror like that. That can solve that, although I need a little squeegee to get in there because this big one struggles to make it. I'll show you that with the camera. Right. Yeah, just zoom in as well. Whoops. Whoopsie daisies. Try that again. As you can see, it's very hard to get in there, but still does all right. And normally within 30 seconds, I can have all windows and mirrors, front, backs and sides with all the wiper blades working properly. Just try and turn that rear one off now. There you go, rear one working. Front one's working. Can have that all done normally within 30 seconds with just one five litre bottle of warm water and a squeegee. Another method is just to turn the engine on. This works in diesels and petrols and put your demisters on and leave it for 15, 20 minutes. But of course, whilst you've left the car, someone could drive off with it. And not only that, it's not very environmentally friendly either. And another thing I wanna mention, if you are gonna turn your engine on whilst you de-ice your car, the fumes your engine give out in the first minute of running are the worst fumes it ever gives out. So I actually prefer to use the water method with the engine off, and then I turn the engine on once I've finished. The reason why it takes a heater so long to demist your windows from a cold start is that most cars don't actually have an auxiliary heater or an electric heater. They use the excess heat from the engine to heat your cabin. So until your engine gets up to temperature, your heater's only gonna blow cold air. Newer cars are better at getting heat into the cabin quicker because of different cooling systems from the engine, but generally speaking, it is gonna take a long time. And this is a big advantage electric cars have because electric cars actually have an electric heater. And in some electric cars, you can actually use your phone, an app on your phone, to preheat your car before you get to it. The engine doesn't have to run because there's no engine. It just uses some of the energy from the battery to heat the cabin. Of course, the disadvantage of electric cars is that when you do use the heater, you lose a significant amount of range, sometimes up to 20%. Whereas in a petrol or a diesel car, you don't lose any range because a petrol or a diesel engine is so inefficient anyway, only 25% of the fuel actually goes to moving the car, which is why you don't get electric heaters in petrol and diesel cars because they already waste so much heat energy anyway, there's no point putting an electric heater in there, sapping even more fuel. You may as well use the heat from the engine, which is free. Well, kind of free, it's wasted, but you're using wasted energy. Well, I hope this video saves your hands from getting too cold in the winter and saves you time de-icing your car. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and check out wiperblades.co.uk. I highly recommend wiperblades.co.uk simply because they've got the correct wiper blades to me every time so far. 
and I do buy a few for different cars. And also, it's very hard to beat them on price. There's a link in the description to them. To get my future videos, please subscribe. And until the next one, cheerio. Making this video has actually reminded me of a school memory in science, chemistry, where we used to put calcium into water because it used to fizz up and react. So it used to show us how the metal will react with water. And I thought, you know what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this water up with the Bunsen burner and see what happens. So I'm holding the test tube with some water in it. Water starts to bubble up, starts to boil. And I thought, okay, let's put some calcium in. And it started reacting quite badly. Uh, started foaming up and over spinning. So I thought, uh-oh, ran over to the water, turned on the water to try and cool it down from the tap and the test tube just went and I could not find any part of that test tube apart from the bit that was being gripped by the metal test tube gripper things you had. Couldn't find it at all. Completely obliterated it. So I have that experience with thermal shock and uh, my teacher wasn't best pleased.